Welcome to Missing the Mark, where we look for meaning in strange places. I'm Christopher. A few months ago, I saw a number of videos from YouTube atheists, that is, YouTubers whose channels have the primary topic of atheism or anti-theism, about how they're discouraged by the viewership and growth levels of their channels. That they're not doing extraordinarily well isn't surprising, for a number of reasons, but what I do find surprising is that they seem to be surprised. They're atheists. Why on earth did they think that being YouTube atheists was going to turn out well? Why did they think that anything was going to turn out well? And look, before everyone jumps in the comments to tell me that it's because the atheists live in a Christian culture, or more accurately, the remnants of one, and so they've inherited the faith that God is governing the world, you're right. I know. But let's just pretend that's not the case, and let me take these people seriously for a minute. Okay? Please? For those still with me, thank you. So, first, why did these people think that being on YouTube was going to work out well? I can think it's going to work out well for me because I'm trying to pass on knowledge I've been given, and I'm trusting God that whoever should watch my videos will, however many or few people that is. It's probably not going to be large numbers of people by YouTube standards, and that's fine, because I'm doing this to give, not to get something out of it. But these YouTube atheists are all, specifically, lack of belief atheists. They can't even give the single putative fact that God doesn't exist. According to them, all they have to offer is that they personally haven't been persuaded that God exists. Why is that supposed to interest anyone? It's not like any of these people are supermodels. Which, by the way, brings up a major flaw in how they're going about their YouTube channels if their goal is popularity. If you want to be popular, you need a team of people with at least one beautiful person and one good writer. You put the beautiful person in front of the camera and have the eloquent person write the script that the beautiful person reads. This isn't the only way to succeed, of course. It can be done with an average-looking person if he has some other form of beauty besides visual beauty. A pleasant voice with an English accent comes to mind. But it's a tried-and-true formula for a reason. So, in consequence of having nothing positive to say, because they don't, according to them, have any positive beliefs, for the most part their videos are all about critiquing other people's videos. Now, that's not inherently impossible to make work. Mike Nelson of Mystery Science Theater 3000 and Rift Tracks fame has been sort of doing this for around three decades. I say sort of because if you pay attention, a lot of the jokes are not critical of the movie, but instead play on associations the viewers will have. But Mike Nelson has been doing this for movies. Even low-budget movies are team projects where someone wrote the script and pretty people performed it. At least, almost all the time. If you look at what YouTube atheists are criticizing, it's people like me. Well, more often fundamentalists, but still. Ordinary-looking people who aren't very popular, standing in front of a camera and reading what they wrote or coming up with it on the fly. How on earth do the YouTube atheists expect to get significantly more popular than we are by showing people the videos we make and then adding that we're really, really, really stupid for making them? In whose mind is this a formula for wild popularity? I was willing to make a video showing exactly how absurd Logic's video about me and Rob was because one person sincerely asked me to, and I figured that at least a few other people might find it helpful. In terms of views, it got about what could reasonably have been expected. It was on par with my more popular videos on atheism. For reference, at the time of writing, my video on why Catholics hate Gnosticism has gotten almost twice as many views. My video on why people are into S&M has gotten nearly three times as many views, and my video, What Are Christians to Make of Jordan Peterson, has gotten over 21 times as many views. To be fair, that video has gotten wildly more views than anything else I've done, including my other videos talking about Jordan Peterson, but it still bears out that the most popular things are positive, not negative. I don't want to oversell this. It's not that there's no value in negativity. Steel sharpens steel, and when one person is arguing against another, the competition can bring out the best the people have to offer. This doesn't really work, though, when one's entire position is a rhetorical dodge that involves claiming that the other guy just isn't good enough, over and over and over. For whatever reason, lack-of-belief atheists have run into the panic room and locked the door. 
Okay, it's their life. But it's not very interesting inside the panic room. And then we come to my second question. Why would atheists think that anything would turn out well? Seriously, why? I mean, consider what the world is, according to them. Or, if you really want to be more verbose in order to be accommodating, consider what they assume, in default of sufficient evidence to the contrary, that the world is. The world exists for no reason, or has always existed for no reason, take your pick. Within it, by sheer accident, it turns out that certain types of molecules in certain environments will catalyze the reactions that make other molecules which contain the same sorts of atoms in the same arrangement. Let's call that reproducing themselves, though there's no intrinsic reason to say that the second molecule has any relation to the first. The only way to say that they're of the same kind is to impose this kind on them. With no rationality behind the world, atoms don't instantiate any sort of general idea which they can then have in common with each other. Just ask any atheist philosopher in the last 100 years. He'll tell you. Anyway, let's hand wave our way past the whole bunch of steps, not a single one of which we have the right to take, and the world is littered with organisms that reproduce themselves. Those with traits that make this happen more often have more offspring. Those with traits that make this happen less often have fewer offspring. As a result, traits that result in more offspring predominate in populations. Well, except for the traits which are not heritable. Details, details. Anyway, the point is that all traits that organisms have are either completely random, or they're because they happen to be inherited from another organism in which those traits helped that organism to produce the current organism, or its ancestors. It is really cumbersome to say this stuff accurately. It should be obvious, but I'll say it anyway, that everything that a human being thinks is the trait of an organism. And therefore, according to this worldview, something which is either entirely accidental or related to the survival of its chain of ancestors. Therefore, the only situation in which it is possible that some instinct, preference, and so forth, is in fact related to your goal, except entirely accidentally, is if you are trying to maximize the number of your descendants. If, by contrast, you are trying to be happy, or not in pain, or rich, or famous, or fulfilled, or really anything that human beings actually try to do, you are misusing the tools which nature gave you. Now, occasionally tools do work for some use other than what they were designed for, or in this case, evolved for, but they're very rarely reliable at it. You can turn a screw with a claw hammer on occasion, but it usually doesn't end well, especially over time. The situation actually gets worse, though, because things like happiness, fame, and fortune are all complex systems, and complex systems tend to be very unstable against perturbation, except in a few stable states. Now, if you have the least experience with humanity, you will know that the stable states are not happy, famous, and wealthy. Miserable, unknown, and poor are much more robust against change. So for things to go well in any sense other than to maximize the number of your descendants, you need a complex system to maintain, in the face of change, a state which it was never designed to achieve, even temporarily. So you need not only extraordinary luck, but an extraordinary run of extraordinary luck. Good luck with that. But wait, it gets worse. Trying to be professionally popular is especially likely to fail because of the tendencies of the insects crawling on the planet's face, which we call the human race. People like novelty. A single performer can't change very much, and change tends to alienate one's fan base. But all the time, there are new people showing up who are working hard to be famous. People like youth, and none of us are getting any younger. And young people, hungry for the spotlight, are showing up all the time. People like energy, but everyone needs to rest sometime. There is, however, a steady supply of fresh new faces full of energy because their hand hasn't been at the plow yet. There's actually a very interesting point in here about how the constant turnover in popular entertainment makes the myth possible that it's possible to drink, fornicate, and drug heavily without negative consequences. But I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Suffice it to say that if the people who are lying to you are constantly changed out, 
it will be hard to catch any one of them in their lie. Be that as it may, the churn of the fame engine is undeniable. People are constantly getting chewed up and spit out by it. And if you think that this is the fault of movie and TV executives, wait till you see what audiences are like. And before you blame audiences, consider your own viewing habits. I know that I'm subscribed to probably a dozen channels which I like, but whose videos I never end up watching. It's not that I don't want to watch anymore, it's just that the way life works out, I end up not. It's not like watching videos is my job. Heck, sometimes I don't watch any videos for a while just because I need to spend that time outdoors going for long walks because the weather is beautiful. Audiences are fickle, but they're not cruel. It works out to the same thing for the video makers, though. Now, it is possible to set one's hand to an extremely difficult and unlikely task because one has faith that in spite of everything, it will turn out well. But that faith should have some foundation, or it's just folly. When St. Francis set out to rebuild a church with his bare hands and no materials, he might have been a madman for thinking that God was on his side, but his reasoning after that, that it didn't matter that he couldn't see how he could possibly succeed since God was on his side, was entirely reasonable. If you grant the premise, the conclusion does follow. But I'd love to know what the reasoning was that led the YouTube atheists who are now discouraged to spend time and effort trying. They may be discouraged now, but why were they ever encouraged? The last thing an atheist should be is courageous. The one thing that an atheist knows with iron certainty is that it's all going to end badly. And I know I'm going to get comments saying that atheism doesn't mean that life is meaningless, that it has the meaning one gives it in the here and now, and so forth. Then why be discouraged? Why not just give your Patreon income the meaning that you're doing spectacularly well? Why not give a disappointing subscriber count the meaning that you're the most popular man in the world? If life has the meaning that you give it, why not give it a happy meaning? Until next time, may you hit everything you aim at. I reject your claim of the glory of the coming of the Lord. There shall be no justice pressed out where the grapes of wrath are stored. The lightning strikes at random without why or wherefore. Real truth cannot be known. Hell, science! Religion comes from peasants huddled in goat herding camps, telling Bronze Age fairy tales unlit by reason's flickering lamp. Morality is nothing but the notion of your gramps, cause Reddit tells me so. Don't feel guilty no matter what you've done! Swirling, turning, pointless chaos. Swirling, churning, pointless chaos. Swirling, churning, pointless chaos into the blackening void. The trumpet sits on sounded and in haste we will retreat. Good and evil, sun to zero, empty sits the judgment seat. I've got no soul to weigh, it's just a charlatan's conceit To fleece the sheeple bear Donate to my Patreon! The notion that a Christ was born is just mythology And what foolish men call glory is just a way to control me Of nobleness and valor, death will make a mockery as void consumes us all Be sure to subscribe for some reason Swirling, churning, pointless chaos Swirling, churning, pointless chaos Swirling, churning, pointless chaos Into the blackening void